Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jack D. In the news this week, as filming begins on the new reboot of Skippy the Bush Kangaroo, producers admit they shouldn't have let him perform his own stunts. <laughs> At a publisher's in Bloomsbury, Nadine Dorries waits excitedly to collect the royalties from her latest book. And after one of Edinburgh Zoo's giant pandas is found to have poor eyesight, keepers immediately regret getting her a guide dog. <laughs> <laughs> on Paul's team tonight is a comedian whose one-man show on Netflix had to be postponed due to the COVID pandemic. And once we have the official government inquiry, I fear more of these horror stories will be exposed. <laughs> Please welcome Phil Wank. On Ian's team tonight is a Conservative peer who is also a trustee of the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, the main sculpture being a circle of beautifully carved V signs directed at all the other counties. <laughs> Please welcome Baroness Varsi. <laughs> well, we begin with the uh, bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Saida, have a look at this. Oh. <laughs> Pigs in a trough. That's this picture. <laughs> Peppa Pig World. Peppa Pig World. Sorry, sorry, I apologise. Is that Peppa Pig World? <laughs> you should apologise. It's your leader. <laughs> you, know, you know what happens? I come on this show, yes. right? And I'm the sacrificial Tory lamb. And then I go away and I go through months and months of Tory training. I get my seven commandments of Toryism. Uh, and once I've kind of been through all of that retraining and I kind of decide to come back on this show, and then my colleagues spend seven days of creating the biggest shit show possible on this earth. <laughs> and I have to come here and defend it. Yeah. It doesn't help. Okay. I, I think that's very unfair of your colleagues. I mean, it's not I seven days of a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> In my estimation, it's about ten years, but... <laughs> Well, what you don't see the positive, I think the positive about the CBI speech, which is what this is about, is that it clearly showed that all those people who deny the fact that white privilege exists could see it in action. Because true <laughs> equality for me will be when I can be as rubbish as a white man and get away with it and be prime minister. If he's that terrible, why don't you resign? Because my resign is not going to make a difference. If he's that oh, rubbish... Oh, it would to me. If, if, <laughs> if, I'd be if, so happy and I'd think so much oh. better of you. Yeah, but, you know, if he's that rubbish... Yeah. ..why don't the British public stop voting for him? That's, that's what democracy is about. And ultimately, listen, you can say what you want... Yeah. ..and we can all sit here and talk about how bad it is. Can I just say I'm so pleased to be on your show and I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a look at him at one moment in his speech? Uh... <sighs> Uh. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> the thing is, because it's Boris Johnson, him saying, forgive me, forgive me, that could be about anything. <laughs> <laughs> the CBI stands for Chief British Idiot. <laughs> He can't remember his place. Then he goes into a completely mad section when he says, well, civil servants would never have come up with Peppa Pig as an animation. They're civil servants. <laughs> <laughs> their job's to deliver policy, not to come up with animated features. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that was a key question, and I have to give it to my colleagues. There was a killer, killer journalistic question. Yes. One of the reporters said, are you OK? <laughs> <laughs> There's one particular quote that uh, came from a number 10 source. It was the worst performance by a Prime Minister since the one he gave last week. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to get a grip. The big question is, anyone uh, here been to Peppa Pig World? Anyone? No, but it sounds good. He really bigs it up. Yeah. <laughs> he bigs it up so much, one has to wonder has Peppa Pig made a large donation to the Conservative <laughs> <laughs> When Boris Johnson visited, he went on the, uh, the Grampy Rabbit 
sailing boat ride, shortly before telling Grampy he'd have to sell his boat to pay for his social care. <laughs> Boris Johnson has been criticised for his impersonation of a sports car, but uh, I, I don't think it was so bad. We'll have a quick look at it, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, we're all, we're all having a laugh, but can any of us around the table here do a better impression of, <laughs> of a sports car? The trick is the gear changes. Ah, oh, come oh. on then, let's hear it. <laughs> Paul, any car yeah. noise? <laughs> Here we go. It's an electric car. It's been charged <laughs> up. <laughs> Was Boris's shambolic speech actually a dead cat? I'm referring to a term uh, which is a clever distraction. Apparently, when you throw a dead cat on the table to change the subject of conversation if it's a subject that you don't want to talk about. With the Prime Minister's dead cats, you go from one to an even worse one. <laughs> I've made a terrible speech. I said to you, you'll never have to sell your home to pay for care. Did I say that? You've got to sell your home to pay for care. How stupid of me. Well, you've not got to sell your home to pay for care, actually, and I've got to take you up on that. Have you not? You, d you don't have to because... It Why is don't a, you have to? It's an unfair policy, I'll say that. Yeah. Because the way that it's now being configured means that if you're richer, you actually keep more of your wealth. Yeah. And that's wrong and that's unfair and it will get defeated in the House of Lords. And but I if the value it. of your home is only what you need to pay for care, you've got to sell it. No. Particularly if you have no other source no, of income. No, you don't. No, you don't, because the law was changed a few years ago. So after you've died, it pay is paid out of your estate, but you don't have to sell your house. You can carry on living in that house. It just means that their kids are going to inherit less once they've gone. If I didn't like you so much, I would say you're splitting hairs. I'll send you the legislation. Oh, Please do. <laughs> Can I have a copy of that legislation as well? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the social care bill was uh, changed at the last minute to make it less generous to poorer people with few assets and more generous to richer people with bigger houses. I mean, is that a vote winner? Gets mine. <laughs> <laughs> News. Why are red wall Tories furious with the Prime Minister? This is the high speed train, yes? It is, Paul, yeah. According to one minister, the revoked plans were a bit like on bullseye when they show you what you could have won. <laughs> Whilst uh, another said, it's a turd and the Treasury won't even give us the money to put any. <laughs> What did uh, several plain-speaking Yorkshire folk tell the Yorkshire Post about their feelings on the scrapping of HS2? Knowing Yorkshire folk, it will have either been to say, oh, we're right chuffed that that's finished. Can you not use the word chuffed with train cancellation? <laughs> <laughs> chuffed in Yorkshire means pleased. Pleased, yeah. Yeah. It's the only time they do say pleased. <laughs> 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 One Elaine Gatehouse spoke for many when she said, absolutely delighted. We didn't want it in the first place. Who in their right mind would want to go to London any faster <laughs> than they can? <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Reese Moggs already got some high speed transport. Do you want to uh, have a look? <laughs> mm. Here we go. <laughs> don't worry, it's a high speed zip wire. No, it's not a latest crap film from Marvel. <laughs> Well, he does seem able to travel in from the 18th century every day. So... <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. In other news, what are the consequences of film and TV starring roles being given to women, according to Conservative MP Nick oh, Fletcher? Oh, yes. He said the fact that Doctor Who in the last few series has been a woman has encouraged young men to turn to crime because they have no longer any role models that they can look up to, so people say, oh, my God, Doctor Who's a woman, I'm going to rob a bank. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at how right Paul was. And it's not just James Bond. In recent years, we have seen Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, Luke Skywalker, The Equaliser, all replaced by women, and men are left with the craze and Tommy Shelby. Is there any wonder we are seeing so many young men committing crime? <laughs> You can see the bloke behind him whose eyes are just going backwards and forwards, yeah. like, what the...? It is. The bloke behind him is almost funnier than the bloke talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. This is Boris Johnson's speech to the CBI, which he clearly confused with CBI BBs. <laughs> During his rambling speech to business leaders, Boris Johnson broke off to praise Peppa Pig, 
The pink-faced, one-dimensional <laughs> cartoon character has been Prime Minister for two years now. <laughs> Boris Johnson sang the praises of Peppa Pig World, to which he paid a visit with his family. Well, one of his families, they don't actually do coach parties. <laughs> Also this week, a key vote on social care interrupted the Tory party winter ball. During a fundraising auction, one donor paid £35,000 to play cricket with Rishi Sunak. Presumably not someone from Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Phil, yes. have a look at this one. Oh, space, space, space. Oh, Jeff Bezos forgot something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's an asteroid. NASA is sending up a big thing to knock the asteroid off course as a practice for when an asteroid comes towards the Earth. So they're going to send there's a little thing there. It's going to come out, knock the asteroid away from the Earth and not towards it. And there it is. Boom. And that's everybody cheering. Um, they all buy their shirts at the same place. I feel sorry for the astronaut who's in that. It's obviously not very popular. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry at home. It was a dog. <laughs> The intended target is uh, a pair of asteroids. Do you know what they're called? Diam... Diazepam? No, not Diazepam. It's, uh, <laughs> not very close. close. Dimorphos and Didymus. The asteroid is 6.8 million miles from Earth. And so, uh, good luck hitting that. We can't even reach East Midlands Parkway. <laughs> <laughs> what sport did the Guardian compare the mission to? Snooker? It did indeed. They called it Space Snooker. The plan is to crash the spacecraft named DART into Dimorphos when it's at its closest point. I mean, they kind of missed a trick. What it... sport is this like? DART? Yeah. Snooker? <laughs> <laughs> the important thing, though, is uh, should we be worried? Or, to put it in BBC parlance, how worried should we be? <laughs> 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 what if it knocks a perfectly innocent comet Towards us. I mean, that'll be an interesting press conference. Good news is mm. the technology works. <laughs> yeah. Bad news is say goodbye to your loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, another group of scientists have found an answer to the problem of your dog not being able to call you on the phone. <laughs> Did you see what... That is annoying, isn't it? It is. Infuriating. Every time the phone doesn't ring, I know it's my dog trying to get through to me. <laughs> <laughs> They've invented a phone for a dog to call its owner. Um, right. It uses yeah. its bottom, doesn't it, to do it? No, it doesn't use its bottom. Yeah, I saw this story. No, but you didn't see the story because it doesn't use its bottom. <laughs> well, I saw a story about a dog using doesn't... its bottom to dial a phone. It do that, I don't know what website you were on. But <laughs> this, is... <laughs> this is specifically about a dog using its mouth and the ball that makes the phone ring. Yeah, but then you train the dog to use the phone, then you've got to wait for evolution for it to learn how to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Mind me while the phone bill's racking up, but somebody's going, no, no, is anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> we just sound like nuisance calling, really. Wouldn't exactly, you? wouldn't it, just? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Hang on a minute, you're the one who's been phoning my wife. <laughs> oh, we've got a VT of the dog using it. Fantastic. Oh, it might use its bottom. <laughs> What will they think of next? <laughs> <laughs> That's astonishing. I don't even know what we were looking at there. <laughs> a dog's ass slowly moving out of a room. <laughs> if I wanted to watch that sort of stuff, I could watch Prime Minister's Question Time. <laughs> this is the news that an asteroid could strike the Earth and destroy human life in a millisecond. And you like them apples, Greta? <laughs> According to Al Jazeera, Asteroids that are 10 kilometres or wider hit the Earth every 100 to 200 million years. So that's about as often as Labour winning an election. <laughs> 66 million years ago, a large asteroid strike ended the first reign of the dinosaurs. The second reign ended when they had that shake-up at Radio 1. <laughs> <laughs> And so to round two, the jigsaw of news. Buzz, when you know what it is. It <laughs> appears to be Dominic Raab in a curry. <laughs> Has he been turned into curry? Is this uh, one of the stories I've missed? It's not that. Any, any idea on that, over, Phil? Is this something to do with Dominic Raab said he's like the vindaloo of politics well, now, so he's like... He's a hot curry guy. He compares himself to a vindaloo. One person working in his department said the only thing Rob's got in common with a vindaloo is that he's a pain in the ass. <laughs> what 
food stuff uh, would you compare yourselves to? If you... <laughs> I'm thinking beef Wellington for you, Ian. Oh, you've got some for us already, have you? No, I was just thinking about it in advance. It takes the pain out of it for us. It does, yeah. <laughs> Paul? Yeah? I think you're egg and chips. It's a bit classist, isn't it? Beef Wellington, egg and chips. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it I is. suppose I'm lucky I'm not a kebab line in the gutter. <laughs> Reeking of double diamond. <laughs> Phil. A pot of yoghurt, maybe. A pot of yoghurt? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not where I would have gone. That's... Uh, probiotic, that's healthy, nothing wrong with that. Better than egg and chips. <laughs> I'm literally cultured. Yeah. 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 Taida, you would be caviar. There you are, that's your caviar. Yes. Beef Wellington, caviar, yoghurt, egg and chips. <laughs> I've made it worse. I've made it worse for you, I'm sorry. I don't have to come here to be insulted. I can walk down any high street in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Got the same result. <laughs> in actual fact, yeah. it was, that was just for a bit of fun. Right. And I think it worked. I've actually got a better game. Better game, yeah. Okay. Yes. And it's called Highly Irregular. <laughs> Highly <Ooh>. Irregular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, everyone's. The graphic except... department's sweating itself again, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Go on, then. Here's how it works. I'll show you a picture of a politician that has been accused of something highly irregular, and you have to tell me what it is and if it's highly irregular or just regular. So, <laughs> let's play highly irregular. <laughs> highly irregular. <laughs> Here's the first picture. <laughs> that is Sajid Javid, who basically has been accused, which I think quite unfairly, actually, on this mm. one, because during the time when Sajid wasn't a minister, he got a job in a firm that specialises in artificial intelligence. So when he became health secretary, yeah. he thought that one of the things that they should do is the health service should look at more ways in which they can use AI Why did within he think the health that? sector. How, but he didn't... There has been no contract, as far as I'm aware... He's still got shares in it? Too. He was paid shares at yeah, the time. Yeah, it was, wasn't he? Yeah, but that co but that firm hasn't got a contract. Oh, is it not yet? No, no, we in, oh, this, we're in the same damn team. But no, I'm we're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> Highly irregular, yes, that's right. It is... <laughs> Highly irregular. <laughs> Have I won the caravan? <laughs> Next, I'm Highly Irregular. Uh, yes, that's uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, and uh, I'm sure he's been accused of something highly irregular. Yeah, it was highly irregular. <laughs> he was accused of not declaring income from his offshore companies, but he said it was not income, it was a drawdown of his director's loan, which actually technically wasn't income. Yes, it, more or less, and he was uh, paying a very low interest rate from this company, which is based in the Cayman Islands, so... But he's it's just borrowing done. money from himself. He's borrowing money from his company. Oh, right. Is that not him? That's not him. That's his company. That's a separate legal entity. Oh, completely different, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so who runs his company, then, if he's not running it? It's at arm's length while he's running a the minister. country. When he's a minister, he can't run anything. He has to be... Oh, we know that. We can <laughs> see that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the shock news that Jacob Rees-Mogg has been accused of failing to declare £6 million in cheap loans from his own company. To be fair, he had no idea he was supposed to declare petty cash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for playing Highly Irregular. <laughs> highly Irregular. So, fingers on buzzers. This is uh, Prince Harry and Prince William. Yes. <laughs> well done, moving on. They're all done happy with a new BBC documentary that's yeah. come out about them. It's exactly. claiming that both brothers are briefing against each other. That's that exactly right. It was, it was claimed that. Um, and the Palace are furious. Uh, they haven't been uh, given a preview of a documentary the BBC aired earlier this week called The Princes and the Press. You were in the documentary, weren't you, Ian? Um, I haven't watched it yet. I was at Netflix pitching Highly Irregular. Um, <laughs> which actually works pretty well when you've got good panellists. <laughs> yeah. What was your part in it, Ian, the documentary? Um, I, I appeared briefly as a talking head. I thought it was really interesting. People got very cross about it beforehand because they said, how dare you suggest that members of the royal family use the press to brief against each other, which there's a very, very long history of, um, by sort of almost everyone you can think of. So I thought that was quite odd. 
And then the Daily Mail was furious that the documentary had been very rude about phone hacking and about the role of the newspapers. So they were cross. The Palace were cross because they hadn't seen it. Everybody involved was cross, which I suggest is an excellent documentary. <laughs> and I was cross because I barely appeared. <laughs> According to The Sun, the BBC has missed out on TV gold after William and Kate decided to hand their spectacular Christmas carol concert to rivals ITV. That is a blow. Where else can you hear Christmas carols in December? <laughs> Keeping it in the family, how else has Andrew embarrassed the Queen this week? I uh, know I should probably <laughs> narrow that down. Um, <laughs> David Rowland. It was one and a half million pound loan. Uh, taken out by Prince Andrew between 2015 and 2017. It was paid off by multi-millionaire Conservative Party donor David Rowland. And here they are together. There's a picture of them. There we are. Nothing wrong with that. It's just a, a mate helping a mate out, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't help when you literally look like the Monopoly man. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Andrew is looking at him with a thought in his head, I hope this isn't an identity parade. <laughs> It's been claimed that Andrew offered access and business opportunities to Roland. Uh, which other royal has been embroiled in a similar controversy this week? Prince Charles. Yeah. Michael Fawcett, his uh, servant. Yeah. Has been uh, offering opportunities to meet Prince Charles. Yeah, he has. And, and worse than that, was a suggestion that you could buy an honour. What, what do they go for these days? I think we're talking six figures. Really? Um, which, you know, is a lot more than a packet of Dutchy Originals. <laughs> I wouldn't really know my main diet is egg and chip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a dusty original is. Paul was right with Prince Charles. Uh, his courtier, uh, Michael Fawcett, resigned, and the Sunday Times published evidence this week that suggested he helped to organise an honour for a prominent Saudi after Fawcett uh, received a donation for the Prince Charles Foundation. Did the leak come from Fawcett? That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> The Fawcett's original job was squeezer of the royal toothpaste. He was. He used to squeeze Charles's toothpaste out. I hope that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're fine. You've got plenty on your brush now, Your Highness. <laughs> uh, now you made that joke up yourself, then. <laughs> You may remember on the on the last show uh, we showed you an artist impression of Prince Andrew. Yes. There we are. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, by, uh, that's by the artist known as Portraits Two Four Six. He's very pleased that his work was shown. Actually. Oh no, he's not done one of me and Ian. He's is been it? in touch and he's done <laughs> oh, done a likeness of oh, both God. Paul and Ian. So let's have a look. Oh God. Here's Ian. <laughs> Here's Paul. <laughs> That's a pop. <laughs> and if you'd like to see any more of his work, it'll be in a skip outside the studio. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round. And we start with Russia creates aftershave that smells of what? Is it Novichok? <laughs> Salisbury. It was fighter jet exhaust fumes. This is a, a Russian defence firm founded by Vladimir Putin, which has created an aftershave with notes of aviation fuel. Uh, not to be outdone by Putin, President Joe Biden recently released the fragrance. It was in front of Camilla and made a massive noise. <laughs> Next, new invention allows you to turn loved ones' ashes into what? Uh, Frosties. Into a great day out for all the family. The actual answer is bath bomb. <laughs> oh, no. The news that a funeral firm has uh, shown off oh. its dissolvable urns. At last, you can share a bath with Granny without social services getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Labour MP embarrassed after confusing what for what? Shit for brains. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually MFI for MI5. <laughs> A member of the Labour Party made a mistake about furniture retailer MFI, hugely popular in the 1990s but <laughs> defunct since 2007. Labour is the country's opposition. <laughs> Next, smelling a baby's head makes women want to what? Dance the Argentine tango. No. Call the police on you. Not. <laughs> Not right. Makes women want to fight. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. The molecule that emanates from a baby's head and makes women want to fight is called hexadecanol. Uh, 
that's also the main ingredient in Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> Next, what found more than 650 years after vanishing into the sea? Atlantis. Which Atlantis? The Atlantis that disappeared in the sea 650 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm surprised you don't know this one. No, it's the bright as well. Yeah. It's Yorkshire's Atlantis. Really? Oh, this yeah. is uh, no, Hull. We, I've just told you it's what it Hull. is. It's <laughs> No, no, it's Hull. This is the uh, Yorkshire town of Raven's Rod, which was last seen in 1362. The lost Yorkshire town was discovered by a team of local divers after they heard someone had dropped a penny in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, world's richest dog sells what? Uh, subprime mortgages. No. <laughs> Seashells by the seashore. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it was a house formerly owned by Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> this is a German shepherd named Gunther VI, who has a wealth of <laughs> around £273 million. Pounds. Blimey. And Gunther flies to his other mansion in Italy by private jet. Has to be private, as he likes to stick his head out of the window the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. It was Gunther IV who actually had the money, I think. Well, yeah. And then he inherited it. Yes. I hope he's paying for his own care, this dog. Yeah. <laughs> After he's dead, obviously. No. <laughs> you know, in, in a caring... They won't take his kennel away. No, in a caring They won't take his kennel away whilst he's alive. He's got to keep a roof over his own head, isn't he? <laughs> 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 That's why you pay your licence fee. <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Saida have seven, whilst Paul and Phil have eight. Mm, well, there they are. There's just time for the caption competition. Ian and Saida, you've got this. Ooh, is that the toothpaste? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Paul and Phil, yeah. you get this. Man says King Kong's sticking his hand for our window, and the bloke says, yeah, it's the bloke seven floors beneath us, I feel sorry for. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Baroness Saida Vasi, Paul Merton and Phil Wang. And I leave you with news that as Labour's popularity surges, Angela Rayner is forced to deny doing all she can to keep Keir Starmer out of public view. <laughs> After cocaine worth £33 million is seized en route to the UK, there's speculation Boris Johnson has got Michael Gove in the Cabinet's secret Santa. <laughs> and after Sesame Street's Big Bird confirms he didn't experience any side effects from the COVID vaccine, there's speculation on the set of the Muppets that Kermit the Frog wasn't so lucky. Good <laughs> <laughs> John Ronson is doing it for the culture. He's telling stories for days. Things fell apart, the podcast. Listen now on BBC Sounds. That's right, and Michael McIntyre is turning the wheel with seven celebrity guests, including Jonathan Ross. Find out who wins big tomorrow at 8, only on BBC One.